So we just spoke about the texture of implants and why I no longer use textured implants in my practice for breast augmentation. Now let's talk about the fill of implants. So basically, all breast implants have a silicone lining. The ones I use have a smooth silicone lining or shell. Then the question becomes, what's inside the implant? And basically, there are two possibilities, either silicone gel or saline, which is salt water. Um, the majority of patients in my practice use silicone gel, for sure, but there's a very significant percentage of my patients that use saline and are very happy with saline. And I'm here to tell you that when you have a good breast, meaning a reasonable amount of breast tissue before the operation, something like a B cup, and or you have adequate body fat, meaning the woman is not particularly lean, that saline implants can be an amazing um, alternative to silicone for women that are concerned about silicone safety. Now, I'm not saying that silicone is dangerous. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that in the last year or so, a few studies have come to light that show evidence of an association between silicone gel implants, the gel that fills the silicone implants, and connective tissue diseases or disorders, things relating to lupus and stuff like that. These are things that were talked about in the early 90s and we thought that it was demonstrated that there's no association. Now it turns out there may be a, maybe a weak association, but there may be some sort of association. Um, so the question becomes, you know, do you want to have an implant that's filled with silicone gel if you don't need to have an implant that's filled with silicone gel? Another thing about silicone gel implants is that if and when they do rupture, the operation to remove the implant with the gel that leaked outside is quite a significant operation. Uh, basically, I'm not just removing an implant and some gooey stuff. I'm removing most or all of the shell, the, the capsule around the implant that your body made because the silicone is absorbed there and if you don't remove it, there's a higher risk of hardness in the next pair of implants that gets put in. So that's a significant operation. Another point to understand is that a lot of women come to me particularly because they don't want a scar on their breast. They're getting the underarm approach. And What's important to note is that if you have a saline implant that was put in through the underarm and it ruptures, I'm able to take out that ruptured saline implant, which is basically just a bag with a hole in it. I can take it out through the underarm and I can put a new implant in through the underarm. Whereas if you have a silicone gel implant that was placed through the underarm, you must have a scar under the breast in order to do that capsulectomy, that removal of the scar tissue that your body formed. So for a, for those reasons, um, not a small number of women are electing to have saline implants. And to people that say that they can tell by looking at a woman who's not wearing a bra what kind of implant she has, it's simply not true. I mean, I've been doing this for over 25 years, and I'll examine a woman that has 15-year-old saline implants that I put in, and very often I can't tell what it is. I would say that saline has a subtle difference in feel when there is adequate breast tissue or adequate body fat. The implant sort of bounces back a little faster. I compare it to a foam pillow that bounces faster than a down pillow, which is more like a silicone gel implant. So it's something to think about. I think a lot of doctors are a little bit too close-minded about rejecting uh, saline implants, where I've seen through the course of my career for over 25 years that you can get a really excellent result with saline. And the next thing we're going to talk about is a new kind of saline implant called the Ideal Implant.